We, um, this morning, Alan was actually going to share a little word with you too, but <clears throat> he's sniffling. And so um, this morning, we are blessed to have a beautiful mum in our church share. I've asked Kate Van Domley, come on up, darling. I've asked Kate to share um, what it's like raising young children um, in the current culture to be in the world but not of the world. Because how many of you know it's a struggle? There's a culture out there that is anti-God, anti-all things of God. And so we have this, this, this beautiful opportunity to nurture and disciple these little ones, um, to be in the world because we want them in there. We want them sharing the message of Christ, but we don't want them of the world. Amen? Thanks, Jackie. Hi, everyone. I'm glad Jackie talked about not being perfect because... <laughs> I guess I really struggled to get up here today and and talk to you feeling not perfect as a mother, but um, God is good and gracious. Um, So, sorry. I wanted a way to really simply explain my thoughts. So, I think I have coined this phrase, kingdom confidence. So, some other really smart person might have written a book on it, But if not, you know where you heard it first. (laughs) So what do I mean by kingdom confidence? And Proverbs 22.6 says, Train up a child in the ways he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So for us, I guess it's really twofold. To know and love God, which means have a personal relationship with him, and to know their identity in Christ, so that They won't look to other people or other things to validate their worth, that they know that they're unconditionally loved in the mighty power of Jesus. Sorry, really emotional today. (laughs) Um, I have a saying that we often use with my kids when they start to doubt themselves or negative self-talk creeps in. And I say to them, that's a lie that Satan wants you to believe that you might have made a pretty poor choice, but there is nothing in you that is bad or terrible that you are wonderfully and perfectly made. And lately one of my children in particular will say to me after I say to him, that's a lie that Satan wants you to believe, he will say to me, that's right. Often he's yelling because we don't have volume control in our house. (laughs) You're a liar, devil. I am not stupid. So just a quick practical explanation of teaching kingdom confidence, now you've heard the phrase, tools. What what does it look like in our house? And so I'm a mum to Cobus, who's 10, who's probably dying of embarrassment, Ari, who's 8, and Sana, who's 6. Because if you know me, you know I love the practical. So often I love hearing this stuff where people will talk and I think, yeah, but... And I do this at work, but that, that's great. I love the idea. But tell me how to do it. Like, what does that practically look like in your life? So just, these are just a few ways. And what we've seen fruit in. So number one is God is real. God is real. And prayer works. So something that we do in our house all the time since they've been babies is Pray. I remember holding Cobus as a baby and willing him to go to sleep and praying to God to give me the strength to get through. But as they get older, and our kids find, they find comfort in it and it soothes them. Like even last night, Ari called me back into bed. I should said I wouldn't say anyone's name. After I'd said goodnight, and he said to me, Mum, I just want you to pray. And I said, okay, what do you want to pray for? He said, I just really want to have good dreams and I'm feeling a bit scared and so we pray and I said you can pray too we pray and they find comfort in him and as I was watching him his little body he was fluffing around with the sheet and I thought we're going to be here forever I don't know if I have enough to pray for or if God's going to give me the patience to love this child (laughs) he was fluffing around but as I prayed I watched him and he settled down and he put his blanket over him and he laid there and he was so still and I thought wow My children know the comfort of prayer 
and they know the comfort of God. The other thing is I want to talk about was thankfulness and praise to God in all the circumstances. And this for us just simply starts as grace at night, teaching our kids to be thankful for their dinner, whether you like it or not. (laughs) Or uh, just to be thankful for whatever happened in the day. And then we always start this, this conversation at dinner time and it goes like, tell me one good thing that's happened in your day today. Sometimes like, my, just, I had the, it was the worst day ever. Like, wow. Well, what's one good thing? Was it that you got to buy your lunch at canteen? That's a great day. But then being thankful in all things, and I think that that's really powerful. The other thing I want to talk about was um, grace and forgiveness. And so we teach our children how to say sorry and also how to forgive. And I think that's also something that we see in particular if they've a sibling fight or whatever and they've said sorry and the other person's like, I don't want to forgive you. And it it's, causes them great distress to know that that person, that they're they're not right, that their relationship isn't right. And I think that these are great foundations um, for kingdom living. Thank you. you. Before you go, happy Mother's Day. (laughs) Thank you. It's not an easy thing raising young kids in current culture, that is for sure. And I'm sure that you do a beautiful job and I'm sure that David would go yes and amen. Is that right? Yeah, cheering you on. That's beautiful. Um, I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you actually um, around the idea of... um, Because I don't have little children anymore. um, But around the idea of being a spiritual mother to the next generation. And I feel like that would apply to every... Not just women, but men in our church, is, is what does it look like to be a spiritual parent to the next generation? And I feel like it would be remiss of me before I do that not to recognise and acknowledge um, a rise spiritual mother and grandmother who is 90 this year. And I know we ought not talk ages, but I just want to recognise Del. Wish her happy Mother's Day. Bless you. 90 this year, faithfully prays for all of us, faithfully loves all of us. And we, you know, we have this ongoing joke with the Woodford family, with particularly Paul and Judy, or Ellen and I, that um, we're actually number one. And Della doesn't tell you, Paul, that we're her favourite, but the secret's out today. We love you, Del. We love that you're part of our family. And I know that you carry each one of us in your heart and you pray for us daily, which means so much to each of us. So what does it mean to pass on the baton, to be a parent to the next generation in the house of God? And I feel like it doesn't matter if you are single, if you are married, um, if you have biologically parented or you have not, is irrelevant to this. I, I honestly feel like it's a call of God for each one of us to bring in the next generation. So I thought there's three points that I thought practical, because I'm with you, Kate, the why. Answer the why for me, don't just tell me the what. How do we um, mother the next generation of, of believers? And I thought the first point I wanted to share was lead by example, not waffle. You know when you meet those people and they just know all of the Christian cliches and they waffle them in one by one and you're like, oh, shoot me now. You do you live it? Do I see it when I see you in the street, in the backyard? So I thought, you know what, lead by example, not by waffle. There's a beautiful passage of scripture in Titus and it says, Titus 2, verse 7 and 8, and it says, in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. In doctrine, so know what you believe, what does the word of God say? Showing integrity, whether it be in front of people or not. 
reverence and incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed. So one who doesn't even believe the stuff that we believe. So that's in your workplace, that's in your neighbourhood, not just here on a Sunday. So that's the waffle. You're the ones that are spiritual here, but you know, out on the street. So showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Lead by example, not waffle. <clears throat> Steer people always to God, not to yourself. You know, when we first um, came up to um, rise, we had all of our kids still at home and our second son, um, we used to ask him, like, we noticed that he would seek out one particular gentleman in our church. And, and for those who are regular, um, you would know Rob Tillman. And, you know, Rob's a really quiet, gentle man, godly man, beautiful man, so gentle. But you would, you know, non-assuming is how I would categorise um, Rob. And yet for Johnny, church was awesome if Rob Tillman was here. And we asked him one day, like, what is it about Rob? What, what makes church great for you when Rob is here? And you know what it was? It was that Rob took time to seek Johnny out. And at the time, Johnny was playing football. And he just showed an interest in him and showed an interest in the things that Johnny was interested in. Would they ever meet in another arena? Probably not. The generation was, you know, Rob's probably old enough to be Johnny's grandparent, actually. But for Johnny, if Rob was at church, it was a great Sunday because he took the time to show interest in him and gave him time. So lead by example. Let your life be an example to those around you. The second thing I had is you have been entrusted by God to lead others. So be a good steward. And what does that look like? <clears throat> well, it means to care for and look after those that God places around you and do it well. How does that go? That's season your words. Choose wisdom over earthly advice. When that beautiful believer comes to you and somebody has said something negative and you just want to get on the bandwagon and go as well, take a moment, breathe, and choose godly advice, not earthly... Sorry, choose godly wisdom, not earthly advice. Always, always choose grace over law. Always grace. Choose kindness over harshness. Slow to speak and always quick to listen. Don't judge or criticise, but be actively, actively looking for ways to encourage those that God has put in your place. And let correction, if correction ends up being necessary, let it be the last resort and always seasoned and wrapped in gentleness. You've been entrusted by God to lead others, so be a good steward. Realise, third point, realise you only have people for a season, so make the most of it. How many of you are parents here of adult kids? Doesn't the season fly? Yesterday, um, we went up to the Gold Coast and um, Chloe was looking for a formal dress, and uh, not that it's her formal till next year, but she's accompanying someone in. She, I took a friend with me because I thought I need, just need a little bit of moral support here and um, she came out of that change thing in this gown and I just thought, wow. And my lip, I could feel my lip doing a little quiver thing and I thought, oh gosh, so I quickly busied myself over here to these other colours. But, you know, I just marvelled at how quickly the time has gone and she's our last baby and 17 years and I could tell you it feels like yesterday that she came home with us and yet here we are doing the whole gown thing and I just was overwhelmed at how quickly the time has gone. So mummies of little people, busy, tired, no sleep, it does end and it comes around very quickly. So enjoy and embrace the moment. Realise that you only have people for a season, so make the most of it. Love well. You know, for me, um, pastoring here, one of the highlights of Sunday morning is to um, stand at the door and see the little kids come through the door laughing. Some of the highlights is I've loved to see Josie Watson and Zoe Weeks come in with their chill skirts and they just love them and they look beautiful and they own it. And I just love that. 
the Luca kids come up to Alan and I and tease us and give us grief over our footy teams because they can. And I just love that they feel so comfortable as they rock into church and embrace it as their own. And I know that for some of us, it, it can get a little bit crazy after church. But, you know, I, one of my favourite things in here is to see the kids, the Brooks I've got here Team Brooks running and hiding from Team Weeks while Team Watson are leading and guiding and getting involved. And, you know, there's something beautiful about the house of God when children feel comfortable because children have no filter and so they're going to let you know if it's not all good. And I just love that they run amok and they own this place as if it were their own. And we want that to be the culture that's in Arise Church. We want that as as pastors, we want that as spiritual parents for the children to feel comfortable and to always feel like they own this place. And so I guess that's a responsibility that we all carry, isn't it? It's, I, I don't think it's just something that Alan and I do. I don't think it's something that just our leaders do. But each one of us are in a sphere of influence where God has put people around us to, um, to cheer on and to carry on and to impart the little bit that we do know and that we try to do well. I've had some phenomenal uh, spiritual mothers over my journey who I'm very confident to say if they hadn't inputted and gently rebuked and gently kept me on the path, who knows where we'd be, but I, I, I value that and I hope you value those that God has put around you as well. We only have these little ones for a time and it's so important that we make the most of it. And I asked, I texted um, this precious little girl um, yesterday because I thought this, this just sums it up for me. Um, we, on our fridge at home, I, 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 I hate anything on my fridge. Like, I just hate it. The kids will put little notes when they come and I'll move it around. If ever you visit us, the side of the fridge is plastered. But not the front. I just hate opening it and there's papers and that and everywhere. But since I got this little picture... Um, I've had this on the front of my fridge because it just means a lot and it's a reminder for me that we only have these little ones for a time and Sana made this beautiful picture for me a couple of weeks ago. I want you just to see it. This is you from... She's got my glasses, she's got the microphone, she's got my dress and I'm wearing purple, I love that. But you know what I thought? We only have them for such a short time. And if we can embrace these little ones and those that God has put around you beautifully and do it well, then you know what? We're in good hands as we go into our future. Are we not? I shared last week just super briefly, but I just want to reiterate that if I can. You know, we're living in times where... The church has been shaken. I honestly believe that. COVID has been whatever COVID has, but God uses all things to work together for good. And I do think over this last season of time, God is shaking his church and, and letting us see. I mean, God already knows where we're all at, but he's letting us see where we're really at as a community as of, of um, faith. And I want to leave you with one thought this morning. Can we commit those of us who are a little bit further on in the journey, and I don't actually mean numerically, I just mean spiritually. If you've been around church for a long time, don't let wisdom leave the house of God. I know that some, for some of you even um, might struggle with the drums banging and the vocals this and the guitar that and the preaching this and you know we hear it week in and week out. But let me just say, if wisdom leaves the house of God, then we are in trouble. For those who have been around the journey for a long time, if you leave the house of God, we are all in trouble. These little ones are in trouble if we don't impart what God has given to us. And I think of the likes of Owen and Judy, who have travelled with Alan and I for, well, ever since we arrived in Ballina, actually, 20-whatever years ago. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. I had a Baptist background and I have no issue with that. I I thank God for my traditional roots in an Anglican church. But have attended churches different to what you attend today, would that be fair to say? And we've had numerous conversations around this over the years. And the one thing that I love about them is their attitude is it's not about us. It's not about us. When we, to quote Oe, when we fall off the perch, we know where we're going but it's about the ones that are coming after us. And so they'll sit second row and the drums are beaten because that's what Ben does and the noise is loud and the kids are running amok and you know what? 
their attitude is it's not about us. We're preparing a way for the ones coming through after us. And there are so many people in this church that are like that, that are just so faithful. One of my favourite uh, preachers of all time is Christine Kane. It's a raving, four-foot-nothing evangelist. I love her. And if you don't, I'm sorry, but I do. And she has this quote, and this is what I just want to leave you with. She says, We have a responsibility to carry the baton of faith to the next generation. We have a responsibility to carry the baton of faith to the next generation. Let's be faithful and do it well. So how do you be a spiritual mother in the house of God? You lead by example. Let your light shine. Let your lifestyle be something that people notice that you are different. You don't need to preach or shove it down their throat. Just live your life under God and it will speak volumes. Be a Rob Tillman, as, it, as what I would say. You've been entrusted by God, so be a good steward. And lastly, realise you only have people for a season. So make the most of it. Amen? Let's pray. Daniel, can you come back and can we sing that song again, just who God is, that last one? Father, we want to thank you this morning for your goodness to us, God, for your faithfulness to us. Father, I thank you this morning for every mother in this place, whether she be present today or um, at home or doing whatever. God, just let your peace and your presence rest upon them this morning. I pray that there would be a blessing, Lord. God, let them leave this place with just your fragrance of approval on them. Encourage their heart today, God, that you are cheering them on. And Father, we just thank you for children, be them natural or, bio or biologically or spiritually. God, we're so grateful, Lord, just for that whole calling of nurturing and discipling. Father, I just pray that you would help us as a community to love well, to lead well, to disciple well, God, and to... Um, pass on, Father, the things of, that you've imparted into us so faithfully. God, help us to be good stewards of that with those that you've put around us. And Lord, today especially, I pray a blessing over our children, those that call us mother, those that call us father. God, I pray that you would bless them, that you would keep them, God, that you would hide them under your wing until such time as you have purposed, God, for them to go and fulfil all that you've called them to be. God, strengthen the parents, particularly those who have got little ones. Strengthen them, breathe afresh upon them today. Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.